What's up everybody? So we're back. Gonna start working on this Megasquirt project again. So on this episode I plan on getting the wiring harness at least installed in the car, figure out the lengths of all my wires and how I want to run everything. So let's get to it and get this harness put in place. Alright guys, well I've got my um, output side of the harness run through the firewall and then I've got it run on the firewall above the transmission and I've got these little tabs here that are for these factory style uh, wiring harness brackets and I like using these um, normally go to the junkyard and grab them off of cars and they're pretty cheap but it helps keep everything uh, neat and organized with your wiring harness all right well, I've got uh, my input harness ran. So I got everything run through the firewall and split for some of the things where I need power and anything that's got a hook to a relay. I've got it over here. All my powers, I'm going to use uh, red primary wire, uh, some 20 gauge for the smaller stuff, and then uh, 12 gauge I'm going to use for the six coils just it's overkill and I want to make sure I don't have any problems with the wiring getting hot and then I've got my three injectors for one bank set aside I've got my uh, distributor wiring for the cam and crank and then the coolant temp sensor and a bundle and then I got everything wrapped around so I've got my other bank of injectors my TPS wiring and my T-map wiring over here. And then we'll go inside the car. And then I've got everything for the harness that's running inside. Uh, my trim switch, wheel speed sensors, uh, my wideband O2 sensor. Any of those things I'm going to use. Um, Two-step, uh, map switching, stuff like that. So I've got... A good bit of extra harness inside of the car so I can tuck everything up, make it nice and neat. So there's that. So that's what's going on with the inside of the car. Um, I've got to figure out where I want to put a fuse box and relay panel and then get the fuse box and get all that stuff set up, get all my powers figured out. And then um, hopefully I can start trimming everything to length and I'll have my coil packs figured out where I want to put it. So next time I check in with you, all that should be going on and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, well, I've made a couple changes. Um, I decided I'm not going to uh, have a relay and fuse box out here. So... I'm going to pull all those wires inside for my powers and then put a relay in there. And then I went ahead and I got all my wires cut to the lengths that I want. I'm going to put my coil packs back here on the firewall and make a bracket for that. And then I'm going to run the ground wires just to the back of the cylinder heads on each side. And then I've just got the injector stuff trimmed back and... Um, my distributor and coolant temp sensor and then actually my map sensor and TPS I left it full length because just in case I change the intake manifold or put the supercharger back on the car and run it twin charged I definitely want to have enough wire so I can uh, put the map sensor and TPS wherever I want to put it so whenever I loom it I'll probably separate it back here and run that still got to figure out exactly what I'm doing inside the car with everything but so far I've got everything about how I want it I might do a couple small changes and then over here I've got a fuse box and a hundred amp relay uh, this fuse box they say you can run a hundred amps through it so We'll see, but I'm going to use this and put it inside and run everything for the standalone separate from the car. 
And then of course the 100 amp relay is going to switch it on and off. So I don't have to worry about not having enough power for it or melting uh, a cheap relay or anything like that. All right, well, slight change of plans. I went ahead and I pulled the harness out after I got all my links cut of the wires. And I'm going to start working on cleaning all that up and getting ready to loom it. But for now, I'm going to weld this fitting on for my T-MAP sensor. So I got my intake over here. Got a spot marked where I want to put it. So I'm going to place it about like that and get it welded on and get the hole drilled out on the intake and get this T-MAP sensor put in place. Alright, so I got our hole drilled out. I'm gonna grab my T-map sensor and an M6 bolt. So here's the T-map and I got the connector on it so I don't lose it. Goes in. I'm done. So I got it in a location where I can easily pull the connector off and it's also a waterproof connector so if it does get wet it won't give me any problems. So I've made a good bit of headway on the harness. I've got all this stuff kind of set aside for everything that runs inside of the car and I added an extra 5 volt reference and sensor ground. I'm going to keep these inside the car and just terminate the ends of them so they don't contact anything. But as for the rest of the harness, I started looming it. It's looking pretty good. I've got to get my heat, uh, my heat gun from work, but I started uh, doing everything with a lighter just to kind of keep everything from moving. But still got to finish it up and I'm waiting for more heat shrink and loom for the rest of the harness. Because the stuff I have is just too small. But I did some crimp connections here for my 5 volt reference and sensor ground. So underneath the heat shrink, I took some of these uh, crimp connectors and crimped those under it and then put the heat shrink on it. So I make sure that the connection's good and tight and uh, no moisture can get into it. But yeah, that's pretty much what I've got so far with the harness. I'm going to continue next with doing the coils and then just keep moving my way down to 
my fuel pressure, um, and my flex fuel sensor, and then just keep working my way down the harness. Um, just waiting for more loom to come in. So hopefully soon we'll have this thing put back in the car. All right. Well, I'm going to work on um, the sensor ground for all the coils. So this is my sensor ground wire that I uh, spliced off of the main harness. Got a piece of heat shrink on it. And then I stripped a section back to where I'm going to have everything crimped together. And then, of course, this is what one of the crimp connectors looks like whenever uh, you crimp it. So I'm going to get you set up on the tripod and show you really quickly what it looks like. So I got them all stripped, a little extra length. And throw these connectors out. Then I've got these crimps here. And I'm going to use this A, which is for the size of a crimp. So let me get this put in place. Going to get it pushed down in there pretty even. Luckily it'll stay shut like that. Let me get all my wires together. In kind of a neat bundle. I'm just gonna kind of twist these to help get it through. Got a couple of strands trying to pop out, trying to keep everything neat. got everything in. I'm just going to crimp it. Check, make sure it's crimped properly. So it's crimped and it's curled inside of itself. I'm just going to check with the neck size down, make sure everything's crimped tight. One more with an A. Got it over to B. Make sure it's all nice and secure. And then everything stays in place. So that's how you crimp multiple wires together for your sensor ground. Then you take a heat shrink, slide over everything. And then, since I don't have my heat gun with me, I'll use a lighter, shrink it down, so that way there's no moisture getting in there, and it keeps all these from being pulled out of the connector. So that's pretty much how I do all that for the whole harness. Alright, well here's what we got with the harness so far. Went ahead and got the sensor ground for all the coils, and then the 12 volt power. Um... I ran a, I believe it's 8 gauge wire up to where I split it off. Um, I'm pretty sure this is what Haltech re recommended when I looked up what size I should run for all the coil packs. So I ran 8 gauge and that'll go to our fuse box. And then of course I showed you how I crimped this together. And then I've got the grounds together for each one of the coils. And then all the coil wires here run together. 
And then I'll show you a little trick that I used for whenever I was doing this harness. Instead of using a bunch of zip ties and having to cut them, take them on and off, I used these like Velcro style zip ties that people use for like phone chargers and stuff like that and just placed them on the harness. So if I had to take it loose, I could just undo little uh, Velcro zip ties and run my wires through or do whatever I had to do. So that's one of the little tricks I used instead of wasting a bunch of zip ties or tape or something like that. All right, well, I'm pretty happy with what we got done. I uh, got the harness, ran through the engine bay, and got everything ran roughly where I want it to be. I've got the bung welded on the intake manifold. I've got a flange made for the idle control. Um, I didn't show you, but I made a pretty basic bracket for holding all the coils. I'm not happy with it. I'll definitely change it later, but I'll show you that next episode. And then, of course, we got the wiring harness. Um, I went ahead and got everything wired up, got all my connections put in for multiple wires for the sensor ground and 5 volt reference and all that and showed y'all how I do the crimp connectors to kind of keep everything like OEM and then of course um, I started looming it but of course I gotta wait for more loom to get in but that's it for today remember to like comment subscribe stay tuned for more content and have a good night